You claim you took Ms. Milan and her other six kids into your home, and now she's trying to take you for a ride by claiming this baby is yours. Yes, Your Honor. That the defendant betrayed you by cheating with Prince's second possible father, your best friend. You are not his father. <laughs> not. <laughs> You know who Prince's father is? Quinnell Milan. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Jones, you are not the father. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, I'm sorry. You are not the father moments on paternity court. A devastated man came to see if he was the father of his son or if it was his best friend who impregnated his girlfriend. You maintain that the defendant betrayed you by cheating with Prince's second possible father, your best friend. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Fobbs, you say you were caught between the man you're in love with and his best friend. Yes, Your Honor. You admit you made a horrible mistake when you slept with both men. You're Mr. Pace's best friend. Yes. And the second potential father of Prince. Yes, Your Honor. When the judge asked Ms. Fobbs about her relationship with Mr. Pace's best friend, this was her reaction. When did this love triangle, this cheating, begin and how? The situation with me and Randolph only happened once. Was there anything else going on in the relationship other than he's just going to work? The thing is, he works at night, so he's never really home with me, and I kind of took that as a feeling of neglect. The audience was appalled, but the judge asked Mr. Randolph, the best friend, about how he could sleep with his best friend's girl. How could you sleep with your best friend's Girl. Uh, I wasn't in the right state of mind. We both was intoxicated. Um, you know, he was out promoting clubs, and she used to come home from the club intoxicated and, you know, looking for him. He's not there. Me and her talk and talk, and one night the talk led to something else. How did you find out that she slept with your best friend? Uh, we were actually in a heated argument at the time that it occurred. Wait a minute, so you're in a heated argument as a couple, and just out of the blue she yells, and by the way, your best friend could be Prince's father? Correct. So far, the messed up situation was being handled very maturely until the DNA results came out. So there's a lot riding on this result. Jerome, I think it's time for the results. <laughs> Mr. Pace. You are not his father. Truth was out, Mr. Pace was not the father of Prince, but the real drama began after that. Oh, man. Uh, so sorry. <sighs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Mr. Randolph, you are not. <laughs> One of the most heartbreaking episodes of paternity court started when Miss Lockridge brought Mr. Tidwell to court to prove her claim of him being the father of her child. Ms. Lockridge, you've dragged the defendant, Mr. Tidwell, to court because he has refused to acknowledge your 10-month-old son, King. You are 100% sure he's the father and claim today's results will prove your case. Mr. Tidwell, you say you were never in a serious relationship with Ms. Lockridge and you were stunned when she told you she was pregnant. The timing leads you to suspect that baby King's father must be another man. The drama between the former couple kept escalating with allegations put on from both parties. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Tidwell does not have a relationship with my son. The only time he's actually seen my son is when I've made it a convenience for him and brought him to him. He hasn't helped with diapers. He barely helped with any clothes, and it hurts. She has another guy that she was sleeping with. 
We weren't. There was nobody else. We weren't. Smooth. A, I'm not gonna drive. I'm not gonna ride the bus four we hours. We were not. Take in three a buses to come sleep with you if I got that in my backyard like though. It was just really sex. And Have you seen it. me though? Because he doesn't treat me the way. I am not obsessed with you. If I was obsessed with you, there wouldn't be nobody else. Oh. Okay. Got that. The defendant named the baby and then refused to accept it. Over this, his reaction was jaw-dropping. The birth certificate. There's no dad's name on it. That's all I want today. And if my son's name is King Tidwell, he needs the man that named him King Tidwell to be in his life. You named the child. I gave her the name that I wanted my son to have. Because at that moment, and you she thought... she put it on there. Exactly. Yes, Your Honor. At that moment, you thought the baby yeah. was yours. Then later on, you started to believe he was not because of what you heard. No, what I've seen. And what actions. you've seen. Only when the results were out, an emotional outburst rocked the court. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. Mr. Tidwell, you are not his father. I'm sorry. From the bottom of my broken heart, Wallace Tilwell, I'm sorry. And to your whole family, I apologize. I have no idea who his dad is at this point. We knew that. We I'm know sorry, that. but I didn't. I didn't it's sleep. It's okay. I... Call me. <laughs> oh, just oh. I'm here with you. I'm not going to leave you. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. And he is going to take good care of her. I'm not going to shun her out. Thank we you. love this baby. I really appreciate it, Mom. Next on the list is a 32-year-old woman named Donna Alston searching for her biological father. Ms. Alston, you've come to court to prove to the defendant, Mr. Holmes, whom you first met at the age of 15, that you are his biological daughter. Yes, Your Honor. You say her biological father is David Alston, the man who is on her birth certificate and paid child support for her. Miss Alston strongly felt that Mr. Holmes was her father and not Mr. Alston, whom her mother was married to. How you first found out the defendant might be your father? Um, well, Mr. Alston and my mom were married. So um, one summer I was going outside to play and my mom was outside talking to a guy, and when I walked up, he, she was like, he was like, tell her, tell her. And she looked at me and said, this is your uncle. This is your dad's brother. I proceeded to meet the family, which is my younger brother, my grandmother, aunts and uncles, and they embraced me like if they knew me from day one. So I have always assumed that Mr. Austin was my dad because his name was on my birth certificate. But at 15, she told me that Mr. Holmes can be my dad. The defendant, Mr. Holmes, was confident that Donna was not his daughter despite loving and caring for her for years. Mr. Holmes, you don't believe she's your biological child? No, I don't, Your Honor. Why? Explain to the court. Back in the day, she was like fast. Mm -hmm. And because I met her at, at, a, at the school bus stop. She was in high school. And two days later after I met her, I had sex with her. I called her again a uh, couple days later, asked her to come back, and we had sex again. So it was kind of like a booty call. Things flared up between the two suspects in the courtroom when it came to abandoning the girl. So when you say Mr. Alston abandoned you, did you try to have a relationship with him and he rejected you? How did he abandon you? I tried to have a relationship with him and spend time with him. He wouldn't have time for me. Yes, that's my daughter. There's no way in the way I would he not calls, think that, me, that's my daughter. He calls me his daughter sitting here, but he's never been a dad to me. Oh, but no she says calls. she tried to have a relationship with you and you rejected her. No, yes. now, when I moved, no, what happened is when I moved away, when I got remarried, it seemed like all that, I was, that's when the anger started coming through. The results came and they shocked everyone, leaving Miss Alston crying and sobbing. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read, as follows. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Holmes, you are not Ms. Alston's father. Mr. Alston, you are not Ms. Alston's what? father. Get the why she do that? Lord, hammers. <laughs>
Sit her down, man. Oh my God. I'll sit down, Miss. Oh. Wow. This. Oh my God. <laughs> A woman came to the court to see if her mother's boyfriend was the father of her three-month-old son. Ms. Holthouse, you are here to prove paternity of your three-month-old son, Zayden. Ms. Holthouse had two men in her mind who could be possible fathers to her son. Shockingly, you confess it's either a man you shared a sexual relationship with who wants nothing to do with your child, or the defendant who happens to be your mother's boyfriend. <laughs> Now, Mr. Chenault, you are Ms. Holthouse's mother's boyfriend. Yes, Your Honor. Though you admit you were intimate with your girlfriend's daughter, you say you strongly doubt you fathered her child. Yes, Your Honor. Drama in the courtroom escalated with the news of Mr. Chenault having a baby with Ms. Holthouse's mother. Well, at the moment, I did not know, but my, as my mom was pregnant with my sister, that is, my sister is Mr. Chenault's daughter. <laughs> And she was... Wait! How old is her daughter? She's about to turn 11 months. How old is your child? He is three months. Three months. When they refused the allegation of currently seeing each other, the judge asked them to take a lie detection test. I want to know when's the last time you were intimate? A long time ago. Miss Holthouse didn't say that. You might as well tell the truth. When was the last time you two were intimate? You're in court, tell the truth. The last time we were intimate, Your Honor, was about September. You know, I've been a lawyer for a lot of years. You all's body language is all. You so stiff right now, Miss Holthouse. I could snap you in two. And Mr. Chanel, your body language and that twitch your mouth does, that's how we can better ask questions. And that's why I just gave you all the opportunity to tell the truth. Because it's obvious from where I'm sitting, you all aren't telling the truth, and there's more to this story. See, we deal in scientific evidence here. So I want to know if both of you say you're not sleeping together anymore and haven't slept together since September, we have access, and we can take a lie detector test. Are we willing to consent to the lie detector test on the question of whether or not you all are still sleeping together? All the commotion partly subdued when it was time for the results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Mr. Chanel, it has been determined by this court. You are not this I can hear you breathe a sigh of relief, Ms. Bogardis. I do think that we all need counseling. What are you gonna do? I'm 20 years old. I don't know, just try my hardest just to do what I can for him. Her mother and I will try to help her. Can you help her and keep your hands off of her, though? <laughs> I don't believe it not one bit. If you looked up lie in the dictionary, your picture is next to it. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. A man, Keneal Jones, and his mother came to the court to prove he was not the father of Keneal Jr. But a whole different melodrama began. You and your mother are co-plaintiffs who have brought the defendant, Ms. Milan, to court to prove her three-month-old son, Keneal Jr., is not your biological child. Yes, Your Honor. Even after they provided shelter to Miss Anisha and Mr. Jones became a father figure to her six boys, this is what they got in return. You claim you took Miss Milan and her other six kids into your home, and now she's trying to take you for a ride by claiming 
this baby is yours. Yes, Your Honor. Additionally, you say when today's DNA results prove you are not the father, you are seeking $1,500 for housing and child care expenses. Yes, Your Honor. Doubts began rising and things got twisted when Mr. Jones' inability to have a child was revealed. Why'd you say you couldn't have children, Mr. Jones? <laughs> Because I used to play sports in school or whatever, so I had to, you know, have a full body physical. And they told me that I wasn't able to have kids. Potential fathers and exes were revealed, which further complicated the situation. I ended up going through my phone or whatever like that, and she got, and she seen that I, I ended up conversating with my ex, so we, they started an argument, so I left that day. And when I left, I went to a bar with my friends. Between you seeing her with other men, her admitting that she also slept with her ex, and then you being told, Mr. Jones, that you were sterile and wouldn't be able to have children, that's a lot of doubt for you. All this time, the plaintiffs took care of the defendant and all her kids, but now wanted nothing more than the truth. Do you hope the child is yours? Yes. I pray. We, we've been taking care of this child since the day he came out, Jim. I love him. And we're, uh -huh. we're gonna, we, I, I will continue to do that. I just want my son to be sure that this is his child. The paternity revelation went on like this. Quinnell Milan, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Jones, you are not the father. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, I'm like... You okay, Mr. Jones? I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope you will find comfort in knowing that you did the right thing. 